Well, hello, 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 and welcome to the Yard Sale Artist. I'm Jared Albrecht, the Yard Sale Artist himself, and I'm doing a little pop-up live stream today for all the, those of you who are maybe at home, working from home, lots of people doing that, maybe you got uh, kids at home, and you just need something to watch <laughs> if you're bored, but whatever the case may be, I just want to welcome you to the Yard Sale Artist. I'm going to be doing a, a book page sketch today. Rare moment of me tightening up some pencils here, folks. Uh, as I prep, I'm going to be doing a Wolverine on a page from the X-Men novel. I have this busted copy of the X-Men novel. Uh, it's missing a few pages, but I found a page that talks about Wolverine, and I, he's about to fight Sabretooth, I believe. I'm going to draw Wolverine on it. What up, Hyper Potato in the chat? It's good to talk to you. Hyper Potato says, I'm tired of my kids. <laughs> I bet there's a lot of that going around, buddy. I'm just going to get right into drawing, starting with my number three Pigra Micron pen. And I'm going to go with the three because I got to work in a really small area. You guys know how it goes on these book page sketches. Sometimes I got to be real careful in the, in the smaller areas. So I got to use the smaller tip. I like normally to use an eight on these and I'll get to the eight in a second but for the tiny tiny detail work I'm going to be starting out with a three I probably should have maybe zoomed in a little closer on this here Wolverine hello GLHG in the chat hello formerly rod line in the chat Good to see everybody. I see a lot of folks watching. That's awesome. I appreciate it. I hope everybody's doing all right today. Having a good Monday. Spirits are high. These are the kinds of things I want to hear. I want to know y'all are doing good out there. So check in. Even if it's just to say, hey, man, I'm doing good out here. I'd love to hear that. I really would. Go. Oh, I see. GLHG just checked in. We uh, one of the other things that I do in my online digital life, I guess you could say, is I am on a show called On Her Majesty's Secret Podcast, and on that show, I host one called Rookie Agents. Rookie Agents, they are rookies, which were Delvin and Pat. They just graduated today. They are not rookies anymore. The graduation episode just came out. And they have now watched all 24 films and podcasted about each and every one of them. And GLA, she says he's going he's gonna to use today's episode as a watch list for the, all the Bond films. Because what we did as part of the graduation ceremony was Jason and Delvin and Pat and I all ranked the James Bond films. And then we did an aggregate of them. So now we have the official Rookie Agents list of our favorites from starting with number 24 and going all the way to number one. That was a heck of a lot of fun to do. What a big undertaking. Basically, we did one a month. So we did two years of watching James Bond films and podcasting about them. Oh, man, what an adventure. What a ride. Really glad we did it. It was so much fun. So thanks for bringing that up, GLHG. I'm happy to talk about that today. What's up, Genome in the chat? What up, Genome? So today's Wolverine design... I want to say the original drawing is a. Uh, oh, I need to. I need to find this out so I can properly uh, credit when I when I finally do sign this. I'll sign it with my name after. I think this is a. I want to say it's a Lionel Francis U design, 
he did a really great drawing of Wolverine, and I've, I've really quite dumbed it down, as you kind of have to do for a book page sketch. Kind of have to dumb it down a little bit, because you can't put all that detail in, or it'll, it'll just get washed out by the words. So I think this is a Lionel Francis U, but I'll find out for sure, because I want to be able to give credit where it's due to the original pose drawer, because this is just a great pose. I've drawn it before, but never on a book page sketch. So today's going to be fun because I've, I've uh, I, this is actually my first Wolverine book page sketch. So yes, admittedly, I did go to a, a pose that I'm comfortable with, uh, as I am want to do when I'm when I'm taking my first adventure of a of a character on a on a book page sketch. I always got to go with the comfortable comfortable feeling first. I just hope I do it justice. And as per my usual, I am starting with the face. Because if you screw that up, the whole drawing is going to screw up. There's some wiggle room in other parts of the drawing with the face. If you mess that up, game over. And as everybody who's been on one of my streams before knows, we are currently listening to the music of Joe November. His SoundCloud, if you search Joe November, you'll find him. But I think the official SoundCloud is J-O-S-E-F-L-I-N-9-9. And so we're going to listen to some Joe November as we, as we draw today. Can't go wrong with that Joe November. I encourage you to check out his album Beats Without Homes. Available on all your digital music platforms. Now, I should probably also uh, mention up front that today's piece, I'm actually ahead on my commission roster. So I am stepping out. This is a non-commission piece. This is just Wolverine on a page from X-Men. So if anybody sees this and likes it and wants to call dibs on it, you're more than welcome to. Won't hurt my feelings if you don't, though, because I'll stick it in my stockpile for when the convention scene starts back again and I'll have a little art in my hip pocket. I just hope you guys enjoy being here, spending a little time together today. Legendary comic book artist and anchor John Beatty in the chat. Hello, John, and welcome. So here's a question for all you folks in the chat today. Uh, GLHG uh, says, what would you say is the easiest character to draw besides Batman? Yeah, but Batman's kind of my go-to, I will be honest. Uh, after that, I don't know, I guess maybe Spider-Man? I like to draw him, but... Um, I could always work on my dynamic poses for Spider-Man. My question to you is, who is your favorite 
X-Man, or maybe we'll expand that. Who's your favorite mutant? Wolverine fan. Cyclops, Storm, Rogue, Colossus. Nightcrawler. I like Nightcrawler a lot. See some folks just just jumped in. Hello there. Don't be shy. Say hello in the chat. We have a super friendly chat group here. Probably my favorite thing about doing these uh, live streams is our chat group. Such a nice group of people who like comics and live streams and talking with each other. It's super cool. I, I just really like our little family that we've built here. So I encourage anybody who's just passing by to take a look, jump in the chat, say hey. Some really cool people in here. There we go. We are getting there. Here we go. So, who is your favorite X Man or mutant? Uh, GLHG says a tie between Rogue and Jubilee. That's cool. Those are answers you get a lot, but definitely not poo pooing them. I think they're pretty cool. I dig it. I dig those answers. To a real tight spot here. There we go. There we go. Dig in this Joe November beats. Hope everybody else is having a nice, relaxing day. You can't help but to relax when you get those Joe November beats. Coming together. There we go. I like that. I like that. Do we got any other favorite mutants in the chat here? Gambit or Dazzler? All right. Apparently, uh, formerly Rod Line is out and about uh, trying not to get in any, any traffic accidents today. That's good. <laughs> Stay safe out there, brother. Tricky spot. There. 
So what uh <laughs> GLA she says road rage with no traffic. Well, apparently Rod Line found some traffic. Y'all been watching anything cool? Since you've been people have been staying home. Any good uh, TV shows out there I need to know about? We've been going retro around my house. We've been watching some 1980s Airwolf. We've been watching some Airwolf. I've also been enjoying the... Um, Netflix has some of the old episodes of um, Scare Tactics, if you remember that show. That's always fun to watch. Mm. Claws, claws, claws. There we go. So, GLA, she says he started watching Stingray. I don't know if I know Stingray. Sounds cool, though. Oh, formerly Rodline says his son is on a Mr. Bean kick. Welcome to my house about every day. We champion Mr. Bean here at Yard Sale Artist Headquarters. I love Mr. Bean. My 13-year-old son loves Mr. Bean. My five-year-old son loves Mr. Bean. <laughs> We are a Mr. Bean household. In fact, every year at Christmas, we watch the episode where, uh, well, basically the Christmas episode. Where he goes, gets his tree and uh, goes shopping for his girlfriend, which is pretty funny. <laughs> Definitely, definitely love Mr. Bean here at Yard Sale Artist Headquarters. Definitely. Mm hmm. There we go. Let's see. There's been some talk in the chat about uh, watching Contagion and Andromeda Strain. Some of y'all are gluttons for punishment. Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever seen Andromeda Strain. I remember once upon a time listening to the audio book, but I don't think I've ever seen the film. There we go Wolverine coming together. Good news, everyone. There's dad rap in the background now. I see uh, folks dropping a couple likes over there on Facebook. I appreciate that. Feel free to hop in on the chat and say hey. Got a wonderful chat group here. Nice people. 
And of course, we got dad rap going on right now. I mean, what more could you possibly want out of life? Mm, yeah, soak up that dad rap, everybody. Thank you, Rod Line, for compliments. Saying the drawing's looking good. I appreciate it. Hopefully, I'll be able to get it across the finish line today. Greatest rap ever. Metal Gear Solid, that game was on point. Castlevania, Symphony of the Night. There we go. Simply the best game ever. Nintendo drops the N64, Ocarina of Time, man. Need I say more? And in these college years, no party was fly unless somebody busted out that golden eye. There we go, Wolverine. She's in the RPGs like Dragon Quest. I'm telling y'all, this girl's the best. I'm in the military and I'm in Iraq. Seems every GI has an Xbox in the back. That sucked away. There we go. That's the truth. It's the only gaming system that might be bulletproof. I finished my war, headed home at last. Got a big stack of games for Dreamcast. Underrated system with some really great games. D2 and Dino Crisis, just to name names. So I, I remember somebody in the chat mentioning that they are Bishop people. I can't remember who it was. I suppose I could scroll back and figure that out. But one of you, not Bishop, I'm sorry, uh, Gambit. Somebody said they were a Gambit person. I recently picked up at a yard sale, surprise, surprise, a painting of a little street corner in New Orleans. And I fully intend to add Gambit to said painting. That's going to be a yard sale piece in the near future. Right now, I got to finish the secret yard sale painting that I'm working on. Of course, that's out in the building. I, mean, I need to figure out how to get a good connection out in the building. Then I can live stream out there doing some painting work. That would be fun. Right now, I've just got a uh, basically a, a wireless repeater out there in the window that soaks up the signal here from here in the house. And then rebroadcast it throughout the building. And it's okay, but it's not the best either. Okay. Oh yeah, Genome said if, if I decide if I'm doing a hundred subscribers contest yet. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to do one. There'll be a an announcement about that soon. Mm. 
Yep, we'll definitely have a little a little uh, gambit on a New Orleans street scene painting soon. Of course, soon is relative when it comes to the paintings. They usually take a month or two because I just don't get out to the building as much as I'd like to. Wolvie, Wolvie, starting to get there. These tight little spots here around the claws. We'll get them all tightened up. Might have to bust out the old reading glasses soon. <laughs> So let's see, during this here self-imposed quarantine, I've watched a Sherlock Holmes movie from 2000. It was a remake of Hound of Baskervilles with Matt Frewer, who is a very odd choice to play Sherlock Holmes. I ended up pretty much liking it. Pretty good. Not great or anything, but it was good. What other excellent flicks are out there? I've also been catching up on some spaghetti westerns. Got a bunch of those that I got in the local library sale. Very similar to a yard sale. <laughs> those have been fun. I've been watching the Ringo movies. Those are pretty cool. Fun to watch. There we are. Uh, Matt Frewer was indeed Max Headroom. I, I always, for some reason, remember Matt Frewer from uh, uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And it's a very different <laughs> performance than uh, you would expect for a Sherlock Holmes actor. But man... I'm telling you, so it, it, the the episode itself it was made for the uh, Hallmark, so I mean it didn't have huge budget or anything. So I mean, don't expect anything great, but it was good. It was entertaining. It was a good retelling of the Hound of Baskerville story, and Fruer was pretty good. He wasn't in it a lot, though. I will say he was in it a lot at the beginning, and at the end, but for the most part, uh, the actor playing Watson carried the movie, and he was good too. As most of you will know, I'm a big Holmes fan. Maybe I should write a Sherlock Holmes comic book at some point. Since the character is indeed in the public domain. Ah, yes, good, good. Like 
Wolverine is starting to make me happy here. Out of most of my danger spots, relatively unscathed. <laughs> There we are. Almost there. Oh, Gino, they try to reach out to Matt Frewer for an interview. Ah, interesting. <laughs> GLHC's right. The song we're currently listening to is produced by Joe November called No Place Like Home, which is pretty much where all of us are right now. I've gotten calls from family members and friends, you know, hey, how you doing during this time? And I'm like, well, you got to remember, I'm a stay at home artist, so it's not really any different for me, except now I just have my wife and kids running around, but you know, it's, a, it's its own challenges. But overall, um, that don't, doesn't bother me. Luckily, my kids are very well behaved. Of course, my wife, she's a college professor, so she just kind of transitioned to doing all her classes online, and I jokingly say we had to turn our office into an office, and we got her all set up in there, and all systems go, but, you know, we've... Her and I both come from military families, you know, we both were military families, so, you know, the whole... Adapt, improvise, overcome mindset. We've had our whole lives and we continue to have it. So this doesn't really rattle us. Adapt, improvise, and overcome. I had a nickel for every time my father gave me that advice. I'd have a lot of nickels, but it's good advice. There we go. And just like that, I got all my line work done. Now, if anybody in the viewing audience right now, especially if you're in the chat, uh, does indeed recognize that this is a, a Lionel Francis U piece. I think it is, but I need to verify that original post was by, by him. Uh, I will find out. Because anytime, you know, you got to do the good artist thing. If you use somebody else's pose, you got to give them credit. And so, by all means, when I sign this one at the bottom, I want to put after whoever the appropriate artist is. And it won't take much to look it up, but I'll, I'll find out. Of course, the original piece is like super cool with awesome levels of detail that I basically had to strip down for book page sketch purposes. You kind of have the fun of doing a book page sketch, though, is the whole problem solving. What are you going to keep? What are you going to let go? Um, I, th I like this one. I think this might be sort of my go-to uh, Wolverine book page sketch. This one's working out pretty well. I don't have any complaints. I don't think it's too low on detail. I don't think it's too high on detail. Of course, you folks in the chat can have a vote. There we go. Now we'll just add a little color to it. Well, let's start with skin tones. As usual, base is going to be light peach. I'm 
considering getting out the smaller tipped micron marker and adding some of that Wolverine hairiness to the exposed skin. But then again, again, it's a uh, it's a book page sketch. So I don't know if I want that that level of detail. It's just something I like to think about. I'll know here in a minute. There we are. Thank you, Rodline, for the uh, positive feedback on the drawing. I appreciate that, buddy. Get that base peach color down, that skin tone. And anybody who's watched before knows I'm about to grab for the light tan will be the next color I put down. This is a shade darker. A couple shades darker. And y'all know I'm a fan of two-toned skin color. And so go into the light tan. Just to give it a little bit of shade. Make it a little interesting. Couple layers on there. Oh, uh, GLA, she did said, did I ever uh, say who my favorite X Man? Well, I guess I didn't. Uh, I see here. I like uh, I like Cyclops, Colossus, and Nightcrawler would probably be my big three. If you forced me to pick one, oof. Oof. Uh, uh, I'm going to go Colossus. Big fan of Storm, too. I like Storm a lot. There we go. So now we've got some shading there. Uh, Rodline and I are in agreement with Colossus as being our favorite X-Man. Uh, Rodline, do you spray anything on the paper before you draw to keep the newsprint? No. Nope. nope. No, I don't spray the paper at all. This is goes directly on the paper. Of course, if the uh, I think some clients have have sprayed it once they've got it to help it last longer. Um, but no, I don't. Uh, I don't spray it with anything before or or after. I've thought about, and I think you and I've talked about this, Rodney. I've thought about getting a spray for for after, but. Um, Frankly, I just haven't gotten down to the, the store to see if there's anything I like there. But sometimes, Redline, um, the smearing of the of the ink that's on the book page itself from the words actually creates a pretty cool shading effect. So I've kind of learned to work with the smearing, sort of make it part of the process. I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest with you. So that one's played out pretty well for me as I've sort of just learned to work on this medium. You know, this is sort of my unique contribution <laughs> to the art world, if you will. Okay. 
Now the real question is, as I'm drawing Wolverine and I'm coloring him man in his classic yellow and blue. Y'all know what I'm about to ask. If you had to pick between the yellow and blue classic or the 80s uh, more uh, brown, orangish costume, which one do you pick? What is your preferred Wolverine costume? You know what I just realized? He needs a little bit more love over here. I'm going to add. He's missing a boot piece, people. And I'm going to add said boot piece. Getting, I'm going crazy, people. Stay with me. Jared's getting nuts with it. I know what you're thinking. Pace yourself, Jared. Be careful. Yeah. I like that. Bring a little bit of that in, like so. There you go. I like that. All right, checking in on that whole. Uh, that whole uh, color of Wolverine's costume. See, GLA, she says the brown has a really cool story behind it, but I have to stick with the yellow and blue. That's cool. You know, I always like Logan in his in his cowboy hat and boots and his jeans. You know, just Logan it up. But I know that wasn't really a choice. We were talking about costumes. But if I was forced to pick between the brown version and the classic yellow and blue, I'd go uh, I'd go yellow and blue as well. I like the look of it. Uh, Ron Line says it's smart that you take a perceived drawback. We're talking again about how the, the ink of the page will sometimes smear and turn it into a positive. And I, I really appreciate that comment, uh, Ron Line. That's I try to do that a lot with everything in my life, you know, try to find that silver lining, focus on the positive. It's just wasted energy when you be negative all the time. It's not how I'm cut, not who I am. So I do appreciate that, man. Sometimes you just got to find things and make them work for you. All right. Let's see here. I got to grab my next color choices. I got some yellows. I got a light yellow and a dark yellow. And I got some gray here to do some highlights. Oops, I missed a blue spot there. I see it staring at me right there. Time to grab the gray so I can add just a little highlight to the claws, give them a little personality. There, a little claw personality. Now we add some yellow. Oop, I see one more spot. A uh, spot of, well, yeah, no, it's going to go yellow. I almost put blue in there, but I, 
yeah, I think the yellow go down through the nose is the design that it's how it was designed. Don't want to get too far away from that. Yeah, I like that. Glad I made that decision. Right now I'm using a uh, color called Sunburst Yellow. Sunburst Yellow. That just makes you happy. There's a little blue spot there, but I fixed it. Jelly, she poses an interesting question in the chat. Bone claws or adamantium claws? That's a tough one, buddy. I'm going to add some dark yellow shading and I'll be done with this piece. So while I'm thinking about that, that's what I'm picking the headline there. Ooh, that's a tough one, buddy. I remember when they first... Kind of busted out with the uh, adamantium uh, claws. Uh, when, when, when what I'm trying to say, Magneto took the adamantium out of him, and we were we found out he had bone claws, and that was just like what you know. So that was such a cool reveal. I get you know, oh. man, that's you posed the toughest question of of the day for me, GL. I think. Uh, Man, I'm going to land on Bone Claws. Tough decision, but I thought it was really creative, so I'm going to stick with that one. Bone Claws for Jared. Not to be confused with Bone Saw. Oh, Bone Saw in the Spider-Man movie. <laughs> There we go. Good old Wolf Erin. Now, I think he does deserve a classic circle. Classic Jared circle is gonna have to happen today, I think. go there we go indeed all right so that that darker yellow i use is my always my go-to which is goldenrod always my go-to darkening yellow that went over sunburst yellow and then in the blue region i just use copenhagen blue it makes a nice highlight off the blacks. So those are all the colors I used. I think we've got this one down for a wrap. It took about, what, 50 minutes? Just under an hour. I want to thank you guys for being here. If you haven't already, please head over to my YouTube page if that's not where you're watching already. 
yard sale artist give me a subscription give me a like all that good stuff i believe i hit 85 subscribers we'll get to 100 soon so be looking for the 100 subscriber episode where i will probably be giving away some stuff so tell your friends if you want to get in on some giveaways uh, be looking at yard sale artist on youtube for those of you watching on Facebook or Twitter with the Periscope, I greatly appreciate it. I am at Yard Sale Artist. That's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And of course, Yard Sale Artist on YouTube. You've been listening to the smooth sounds of Joe November. Check out his SoundCloud at J-O-S-E-F-L-I-N-9-9. And we had John Beatty in the chat. He has a wonderful art channel on uh, YouTube as well. John Beatty Art. I'm a guest there from time to time. And he's a super talented guy, so I encourage you to check out his channel. I believe that's all my plugs. Uh, wait, actually, no, I have one more. We will be back with our regular Tuesday night show, myself and Mark Catherley out of Bermuda, tomorrow night, as usual, 5 p.m. Central Time. So that's 6 Eastern, 4 Mountain, 3 Pacific, and 7 p.m. if you live in Bermuda like Mark does. But 5 p.m. Central Time, we'll be back here on this channel on YouTube tomorrow night. Uh, drawing some more stuff for you. Hope to see you there. Thanks for stopping by, everybody.